Hello and welcome to How To Wednesday. Today I'm going to talk about seven drills for coaching the mental game. And for you players, you can practice these on your own as well, or ask your coach to help you. All right, here we go. So the first two drills, oh, and these drills come from some of the best D1 pitching coaches in the business. When I was at convention last year, they did this awesome segment called uh, Fireside Chats, and this was the pitching segment. And the very first question was whether they focus on the things that are difficult or the perfect scenario, scenario. and they all talked about working through the difficult times. So these are all drills that they came up with and then I kind of categorized them with my seven C's. So get a little glimpse into the C's I use to describe mental strength. So let me pull this up. All right, the first two are competitive and courageous, both drills from Melissa Lombardi of Oklahoma. So to practice being competitive, you start with a tough count define what success looks like in that situation and earn a point every time you succeed. So I'm going to use pitching examples for all these since they were all from pitching coaches. So tough count, 3-0. No one likes that one, right? So in a 3-0 count, success is throwing the next pitch as a strike. If, even if it's hittable, you want to make sure that is a strike so you don't give the batter free base. So if you do that, it's a point. And then Keep adding these points up, keep working through different counts, and then keep track of it so that the next time you do this drill, you can try to beat your score. So the real competitive athlete keeps track and keeps working to get better and better each time. So if you're trying to be more courageous, first you have to define what failing looks like in that particular drill, and then have consequences for it. So for example, if you're working on your changeup, uh, it would be a fail if it was either too fast or it didn't hit its spot. Maybe it was too high, too low, in or out. So define what that means to you, maybe just what you're working on that day, and then practice facing that fear and succeeding at the drill. So maybe you can keep a tally of how many times you do it right. And then if you miss, there's a consequence. So I like to just have a physical consequence that nobody likes, push-ups, uh, burpees, up-downs, um, even I used to, usually just went opposite of what the girls did for weights that day. So if they worked on arms, do something legs. Always abs are a good option. But that little fear in the back of your mind of not wanting to have that consequence will help you deal with that fear of failure. So next drills, consistent and composed. So consistent this is a drill from Karen Weekly of Tennessee. Uh, you want to describe and practice your pre-pitch routine. So everyone has their routine naturally and then get more specific and purposeful with it. So get the ball back, go back of the circle, take a deep breath, step up to the mound, get your pitch, see the pitch in your mind and go. So you can adjust this routine but you want to make sure it's something you can do every single time. And then you practice within a sequence of pitches doing that routine every time. Get the ball back from the catcher, do your routine, throw the pitch, and so on. To make it a little more challenging and difficult, have someone try to distract you. You know, like that, that fan or that uh, call you disagree with. So have someone try to throw you off and practice continuing your routine through that. Next is Composed. So this one's from Beverly Smith of South Carolina. She likes to have her pitchers run before the drill so they can get their heart beat up. So she did, um, I think she talked about doing poles with her team. You can even just do jumping jacks before a pitch sequence. It helps simulate playing with nerves because the nerves have that same physical effect of making your heart race. And then practicing calming yourself down, taking that deep breath or stepping off the mound and doing it again. So it's a nice way to practice that physical reaction to stress. Next up, in control. So this one's from Kirk Walker of UCLA. He likes to have his girls journal during and or after performances. So if you can have your journal in the dugout, awesome. Otherwise, uh, reflect afterward. So you ask yourself, how did you fail in the game? What caused you to fail and how can you fix it? So the thing I like about this is it helps you also take the judgment out of failure. You're going to fail big failures, little failures, they happen, but they just give us feedback. So if you practice this process, it helps you gain more control out of those 
tough moments. So write down everything from a big failure, uh, I gave up a home run, to a little one, missed my spot. And then work on how exactly you can fix it. So flipping it to what's productive. Next, committed from Stephanie Van Brinkle Prothro. <laughs> it's a mouthful from Alabama. Congrats, she just got married this past year. Um, she likes to watch video with her players to get an, to get accurate and visual feedback, and then set they set goals and adjustments to track progress. So that's super committed. It gives you a very clear picture, literally, of what's going wrong and what to work on, and then write down your goals for adjustments and you can say committed to that process of getting a little bit better each time. And finally, confidence. So this is one of mine. <laughs> I like to throw this one out there for confidence. And I guarantee all of these coaches implement this with their drills as well. So expect, notice, and keep track of progress and success. So not just the big wins or great things, but every little thing that you've done a little bit better or figured out a little bit more. Count every step toward improvement and celebrate them and then look back on how far you've come. So I like to have my girls write down wins each day. So or we talk about wins after each game. Every little thing. You can even call them out for teammates, which is a little bit easier. Every little thing counts and I want you to really notice it. That way on those tough days you can look back and kind of just remember like, okay, now I do have this. Helps for overall confidence confidence and situational confidence, which we'll get into a little bit later. So that is, oh, hey, I'm back. That is our infographic for today. You can go ahead and grab that over at this website, uh, mentalsweetspot.com forward slash mtdrills. And you can get that full article with all the stuff on these drills and that infographic to print or have with you at all times. Thank you for joining me today. Please like, comment, and share, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good day.